the Prime Minister and Treasurer are out and about across the country selling the budget, which says it is all about Middle Australia. The budget is all about cost of living relief in Middle Australia. In Middle Australia, support Middle Australia. Support for Middle Australia was absolutely central to support people in Middle Australia. Substantial help for Middle Australia. It was aimed squarely at Middle Australia. Nothing says Middle Australia like making it cheaper to see a doctor. Middle Australia, Middle Australia, Middle Australia, Middle Australia. Let's go live to Perth now. The Deputy Liberal Leader, Susan Lee, joins me. You're also on a, a post-budget <laughs> blitz. What's the feedback from Middle Australia? Well, Karen, it's interesting that Middle Australia has made it into the budget talking points with the Prime Minister and senior ministers saying the term many, many times, as you've just illustrated. Unfortunately, Middle Australia didn't make it into the budget. It didn't make it into the actual budget, the measures that unfortunately have absolutely left Middle Australia behind, including people here in the West. This is my fourth visit since I became Deputy Leader. Behind me is a hub of activity at Grouch & Co Coffee Roasters in the southern suburbs of Perth. And there's lots on their mind, but absolutely on the mind of every small business is this trucking tax, because so much of the inputs into hospitality, into manufacturing, into business in WA come across the Nullarbor from the eastern states and this is absolutely going to smash small business and it's just one example of how Anthony Albanese has totally left Western Australia behind. Tax on gas, tax on farmers, tax on truckies um, and no measures to tackle the cost of living and the rental crisis which is unfortunately really biting in the suburbs around me. Yeah, the housing and rental crisis, which really is an issue right across the country, I know it is a, a big one in WA as well, that raises the point, why doesn't the Coalition revise your position when it comes to the, the government's housing future fund? You might be critical of elements of it, but it, isn't it at least making some progress towards getting some more housing supply out there? Karen, we're not there to rubber stamp poor policy and just because the policy has worthy intentions, which understandably any housing policy does at this time, doesn't mean it actually makes any sense. So it's an inflationary off-budget fund. It's talking about 30,000 houses over several years. I think that they need 20,000 in Perth almost immediately. We all know it's a drop in the ocean. Our message to the government is go back, start again, do this properly, engage state and local governments and recognise that you have to unlock supply and you have to do many things on the housing front and simply short-term payments of compensation without addressing long-term structural issues in the budget is the main problem with this budget and uh, you know the, the, the just talking about, as I said, a policy that has good intentions and trying to pretend that actually that helps the people who are desperate for homes, who just simply cannot find a roof over their heads, that's appalling. When, you, when you've made that point, and Mr Dutton's made the point as well, you've referred to this migration increase that we're seeing at the moment, this bounce back after COVID, but the reality is that the former government had forecast a higher number sooner. So does the coalition position retain much credibility on that front? Well, the first thing I want to say is that governments deal with the events that they face and the circumstances they face. And they also should plan properly for any migration number. Right now, we've got 1.5 million migrants over five years and we have no plan. And we have congestion in our capital cities and elsewhere. And we have no spend on infrastructure because the government has held up the infrastructure spending. I know in rural Australia, there's actually no growing regions funding for two years. And the word infrastructure wasn't mentioned once in the entire budget. So to actually have that sort of level of mismatch and misunderstanding and the wrong priorities is what we're calling out. Uh, we're not against migration and we know the value that migrants add to this country and have had and will continue to add. What we're against is 1.5 million migrants over five years without any sort of plan 
at a time when infrastructure spending is actually being cut. And Kieran, I'm the Shadow Minister for Skills and Training and I will always say we should skill Australians first and balance that with bringing skilled migrants into the country. But I'm not seeing a plan for that either. So it's absolutely woeful and particularly here in the West where, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't know why the Albanese government is punishing Western Australia in this budget. The surplus that they realised is because of the resources sector. The benefits of iron ore, of gas, of agriculture, of the absolute hard work, energy and enterprise of Western Australians um, is what Anthony Albanese is, is building his surplus on. But unfortunately, he's punishing the very state that actually bought this country out of COVID. They've got a, a super generous GST distribution though, haven't, haven't they, WA? You'd recognise that. And we recognised the value of the GST reprioritising in Western Australia and we stand by that. And here I am in my fourth visit to the state and people understand that that's our policy. I was asked about it on the first visit. I'm not asked about it now because I think people are recognising that the coalition is actually backing in the people of WA. We've got people who work FIFO in this state, Kieran, and they work really, really hard. They absolutely deserve to keep more of what they earn. That includes no threat to the state three tax cuts but let me just come back to this truckies tax because this has actually really been spoken to me by so many businesses already over here is that they know how much it costs to bring their inputs over from the eastern states and we're talking about really really big increases to costs as a result of that and businesses that are really doing the numbers seriously and worried that they actually won't be viable so i think anthony albanese instead of talking about Middle Australia, but not actually understanding the needs of Middle Australia, really needs to get over here to the West and get things right. There is a nuclear energy committee hearing in Canberra right now, hearing evidence from uh, some, including the head of the Minerals Council, saying that the prohibition on nuclear energy needs to be removed, particularly in the context of our submarine plans. So why not do it on the energy front? It does remain a tough sell politically. You'd recognise that, even though your, your leader reiterated the coalition's support for nuclear energy in his budget reply. Well, that's absolutely right. In order to have a nuclear energy industry associated with nuclear submarines, there does need to be an amendment to the EPBC Act. And the government should not walk away from that. They actually should acknowledge that. That's the first thing. The second thing is Peter Dutton made clear in his budget in reply speech, we need to progress examining the uh, opportunity that small modular reactors and micro reactors may be able to provide us. And we need to look at nuclear energy from an engineering engineering and science perspective, why wouldn't we? When we know that the challenge around baseload power is one that is well recognised across the world and many other countries have responded sensibly and seriously with a nuclear energy policy. So we're, t we're saying we should have that conversation in Australia. We should investigate that and we should recognise that we all want to reduce emissions and this is a way to do that. Mm. So we should be part of that. Chris Bowen, the Energy Minister, slammed the idea in the budget reply again. He says it's too costly, takes too long, and where do you put the reactors? It's that fundamental threshold that, again, shows you how sensitive this is as a, a political proposition. Well, uh, I talk to people of all age groups, and many of them are now saying that like Europe, which is highly environmentally responsible, we should look closely at nuclear energy. And by the way, this is the Chris Bowen that went to war on gas, that said gas was evil, that is quite happy to stand in Canberra and talk about the surplus that the Labor government has been able to scratch together over the last 12 months, thanks to gas and iron ore and the commodities that Australia produces that he seems to want to go to war with and he seems to want to tax more. Susan Lee joining me live from Perth. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.